Our definition of the exponential function in terms of a series makes a lot of sense, especially when you think about things that you learned in introductory calculus. Think back, think way back to when you learned derivatives and integrals. What's the derivative of x to the n? Of course, that is n times x to the n minus 1. What is the integral of x to the n dx? That, of course, is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Oops, I forgot the constant. Oh, I also forgot that this does not quite work. When n is equal to negative 1, there's something a little different there. But let's keep it simple. This is nice, cool beans. Now, what can we do with this in light of the exponential function? Let us consider the definition of e to the x. That is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus etc, etc. Now, what's the derivative of e to the x? Do you remember that? We might be able to figure it out, given what we know about polynomials. What happens when we take the derivative of e to the x? What's the derivative of 1? Well, that's 0. The next term is x. What's the derivative of x? That's 1. Let's see, our next term is 1 over 2 factorial times x squared. The derivative of that is 1 over 2 factorial times 2x, the derivative of x squared. The next term is 1 over 3 factorial times 3x squared. Then 1 over 4 factorial times 4x cubed. We keep going. The nth term of the exponential series has derivative 1 over n factorial times n times x to the n minus 1. Now we can do a little bit of simplification here. I can get rid of that 0. My first term is 1. What is the next term? Well, 2x divided by 2 factorial is simply x. What is 3x squared divided by 3 factorial? Well, the 3's cancel, and I am left with a 1 over 2 factorial times x squared. Aha! I see where this is going. The 4x cubed divided by 4 factorial simplifies to 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed. And this keeps going until that nth term, its derivative, is 1 over quantity n minus 1 factorial times x to the n minus 1. Looking at this net answer, we see again the series for e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. You may recall learning that. Now, this is not an honest proof. This would not pass muster. We have skipped all kinds of subtleties and details here. However, it's still really cool that just manipulating this series as if it were a long polynomial seems to do the right thing. Well, let's keep going. Let's keep thinking. What happens if instead of differentiating, we integrate e to the x? The integral of e to the x dx is what? Well, what's the integral of 1? That's simply x. What's the integral of x? That's x squared over 2. The integral of 1 over 2 factorial times x squared is 1 over 2 factorial times the integral of x squared. That's x cubed over 3. The next term is 1 over 3 factorial times x to the fourth over 4. This keeps going and going until we get to the nth term. Its integral is 1 over n factorial times x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Once again, let's simplify. Let's see what we get. The first term is x. The second term really gives us 1 over 2 factorial x squared. That's great. The third term, when I take that 1 over 2 factorial and I put an extra factor of 3 in the denominator, by definition, I have 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed. Keep going all the way down the line, that nth term is going to be 1 over quantity n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1. And once again, we see that just doing things term by term gives us the answer that the integral of e to the x dx is e to the... Wait a minute. Oh, 
we're kind of missing something. We're missing that first term. We're missing the one out at the beginning. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, I forgot something else. What? I forgot. I forgot the constant. I forgot the constant again. I forgot the constant. But that is what saves us. Why? Because each of these integrals has an arbitrary constant of integration in front of it. We can just lump them all together into some constant C. And you know what? We can pull out a one from that, pop it at the beginning of this series, and indeed, we get, once again, the exponential series, the series for e to the x. So, we have that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. We have that the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus a constant working, term by term, seems to do the job.